In this video, I'll show you how to use Google Kaneko to build Docker images inside a GitLab pipeline without being dependent on the host Docker engine. Kaneko is a tool to build container images from a Docker file. If your project has a Docker file and you want to build Docker images from that file and then you want to push it to some container registry and you don't want to get access to the host container or using any other container services like docker in docker you can use google kaneko which will actually build a docker image from your docker file and then you can use the same google kaneko push it to the container registry to use google kaneko you need to run it inside a container or a kubernetes cluster so in case of gitlab pipelines you will need to register either a docker runner or a kubernetes based runner and then you can run your pipelines and you can integrate google kaneko to build your docker images so let's switch to the GitLab dashboard first let's register a docker executor and then see how we can integrate google kaneko for building docker images so here i have already a running setup of our GitLab server which is running on localhost 8000 port and i've already created a repository and currently i don't have any runner so to run your GitLab pipelines you first need to register a runner if you have not seen my previous videos i've already pushed a couple of videos on how to register a GitLab lab runner by using different methods i'll just quickly go through to register a docker runner and then we will switch to the gitlab ci file to use google kaneko so i'll click on the new project runner then i'll assign it a tag i'll call it kaneko and then i'll give it some description i'll click on create runner now i have got the gitlab runner registration command so i'll copy this command from here and now I'll switch to my terminal where I have the GitLab server and the GitLab runner running. So if I do a Docker PS, I have this GitLab community edition and I have this GitLab runner. To register a GitLab pipeline executor, you need to log into the GitLab runner container. So I'll log into the GitLab runner container using Docker compose command. And now I'll paste the command which I have copied from the previous step from the GitLab runner registration. I'll paste that same command here. And the only thing I need to add here is the Docker network mode, which should be the host. So the GitLab runner can get access to the GitLab server container through localhost. Next, I'll give this runner a name. So I'll call it Kaneko. Then as I mentioned that if you need to use Google Kaneko for building Docker images, you need to register your GitLab runner, either a Docker or a Kubernetes or a Docker machine. So for now, I'll just set it to a Docker executor and then you need to set a default image. So for now, I'll just set it to Alfine because we can override this inside the GitLab CI file. Now our GitLab runner is registered and now if I click on the view runners, I can see that the GitLab runner is registered with the tag name Kaneko. Next, I'll switch to the pipeline setup and I'll click on the build pipeline editor and then I'll click on configure pipeline. And here I'll paste some basic CI file to test the Google Kaneko image. So I'm setting the stage to build. The tag name is Kaneko, which is matching with what we have registered already. And inside the image, if you guys remember previously, we were using either some Docker image or some Python image. But in this case, since we need Google Kaneko, I'm setting the image to gcr.io Kaneko project and then executor and then the version name with the debug tag. And I'm overriding the entry point to empty. And next I'm running a script which is a conventional project with the docker file inside a root directory if you run this command kaneko executor kaneko slash executor cli command will be available inside this container because we are using this docker image since we are setting this to no push this means that it will only build the docker image from the docker file inside this repository and it will not try to push that image to any container registry if you are not passing this no push it will first build the docker image and then it will try to push that docker image to the, the container registry. Let's commit this and see how this goes. Now I'll switch to the pipelines and you can see that the job is running and if I go to the details of this image, 
first it's preparing the docker executor and next it's pulling the docker image from the gcr.io for the google kaniku so now this was expected that this pipeline failed and since the kaniku executor is looking for a docker file inside this project root directory and we don't have that docker file yet so let's quickly move to the repository and add a simple docker file so i'll go here and i'll click on the new file I'll call this file docker file and just to test this demo with the docker file I'll just add these two lines so first it will pull the python 3.10 alpine image and then it will run this image and it will print the current python version so I'll commit these changes and now if I switch back to the pipelines you can see that the pipeline is running again and now if we go to the details of this pipeline since the image was already downloaded for the Google Kanigo it's using that same image from the cache now it should start building the docker image from that docker file we just added and here you can see that the pipeline succeeded and it has run this command kaniko executor no push so first it's retrieving the python image as we have mentioned at the top of the docker file and then after running that bash command python version it's printing the python version here and here the job is succeeding so this was the very basic usage of the google kaniko and as you guys have noticed that we are not using any docker in docker service here also we are not mounting the docker docker.soc file from the gitlab runner to the docker executor and that google kaniko is building the docker image from the docker file without any dependency on the docker engine kaniko solve actually two problems so if you guys remember from our last video where we registered a docker executor using the docker and docker service and then in another video we actually use the docker.soc file from the host machine into the gitlab runner and we have seen that there are some security issues with with both of those methodologies either it's docker in docker where it requires a privilege mode to function which is a significant security concern and then with the docker.soc file as we have seen that you are giving access to the host docker engine from within the pipeline and any potentially risky command could actually affect your host docker engine as well so just to summarize to use the kaniku with the gitlab you need either a docker executor first either a kubernetes executor or a docker machine but you don't need access to the host docker engine or a docker in docker which is actually another external service which you need so using the kaniku you can just build your docker images without dependency on the docker host engine and what it does that it actually picks the docker file and then it picks each instruction from the docker file one by one and then it runs in the user namespace without getting access to the docker engine now let's talk a little more about how we can utilize the google kaniku for some other project structure like in case you have your docker file inside a nested directory so if you create a new directory here maybe you can call it like source and then inside the source directory you create a docker file i'll reuse that same script and then i'll commit this docker file so now instead of building the docker image from this root docker file in case you want to build the docker image from this source directory docker file how you can use the google kaniku to get access to that nested docker file in that source directory for that i'll go back to the build then pipeline editor and what i'll do is that alongside the no push flag i'll add this another flag called docker file where you can mention the complete path to your custom docker file which could be inside another directory so ci project directory will be the root directory of this repository and then inside the root directory we have the source folder and then we have the docker file let's commit these changes and see how the google kaniku can get access to the nested directory docker file so i'll commit these changes and now i switch back to the pipelines and i'll go to the details of this pipeline job and here you can see the updated command which is using the docker file from this nested directory and it's building the docker image the same way we did before so we have tried building docker images from the docker file using google kaniku now let's try google kaniku by pushing the built docker images to some container registry so if you want to push docker images after you have built it you first need to remove this tag called no push so it will start pushing 
changing the docker image after it built it to the container registry and where do you want to push that built docker image you can mention that by using the destination flag so under the destination you can mention your registry name in this case i'll push my docker image to the docker hub so i'll mention my docker hub username here and then under the username i'll mention my repository name which is the container repository and then whatever the git commit tag name is the image will be tagged with exactly that commit tag name but if you want to push the docker image to the docker hub under your username you first need to log in to your docker hub in case of using the docker cli if you want to do a docker push first you need to do a docker login so the same way in case of the nico executor if you want to push your docker image to some private container registry you first need to log in to that container registry by using the kaniku config file to create the kaniku config file i'll add another element here called before script and inside the before script i'll paste my container registry url which is the index.docker.io for the docker hub and then i'll add my authentication details which is my username and my password in the form of base64 encoded all these authentication details for the container registry will be pushed to this file under the slash kaniku docker config.json when we run this pipeline first the before script will run and it will push the container registry details alongside the authentication details to this file called kaniku.docker config.json when the script part is running and the kaniku finds that you have mentioned a destination so that means you need to push this build docker image to a container registry so kaniku will start looking into this kaniku slash docker.config.json file and it will find that you have mentioned the container registry to docker hub so it will start pushing the docker image to this container registry now let's commit these changes and see if the kaniku is pushing the docker image to the docker hub after it built it i'll switch to the pipelines and then i'll go to the details of this pipeline the pipeline is succeeded and first you can see here in the before script that all the authentication details for the docker hub container registries are added first to the config.json file and then the build and the push command has been executed here by pulling the docker image from inside our docker file and at the end it has pushed that docker image to my username on the docker hub so here i am on the docker hub under my username under the repositories i have this repository repository called build with lol and if i go to this repository you can see that i've just pushed this commit with the tag name to whatever that get commit tag name was under my pipeline so it's confirmed that we have used google kaniku for building docker images from the docker file and then we tested it to push that build docker image to the container registry so let's advise quickly google kaniku is a tool used to build container images from a docker file inside a container or inside a kubernetes cluster so in case of gitlab pipelines you need to register a docker executor or a kubernetes executor to use the google kaniku and the problems the google kaniku solve is that if you want to build your docker images using the docker in docker service you need to give access to the privilege mode and in case of using the docker.soc file you are actually exposing your host docker engine to inside the pipeline and both of these two methods could have some safety issues and to overcome these two issues you have the solution in the form of the google kaniku and google kaniku requires either kubernetes docker or docker machine you can use google kaniku to build images from the docker file inside the root directory you can configure it to pick that docker file from inside a nested directory you can use it to build docker images to the container registry including both public and and private container registries so that was all about building the docker images i think we have covered enough of docker executors including the basic docker executor then the docker in docker executor and then lately in this video we covered the google kaniku so in the next video what we will do is that we will set up a container registry inside the gitlab server gitlab comes in with a default container registry but you just need to switch some flags in inside the gitlab configuration so in the next video i'll show you how we can set up our own container registry and then i'll show you how we can push and how we can log into that container registry